Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Selectmen. I'd like to call to order at uh, 641. Um, today is January 7th, 2019, and we are kicking off the budget season. <clears throat> it seemed like we ended the budget season. <clears throat> so we have uh, Catherine, who is the director of Sunderland Public Library. We got members of the uh, um, board of Trustees, and they're going to put forward their fiscal year 20 budget presentation. Catherine, your your show. Okay. Um, so this year we are, are requesting increases in each of our lines. Um, however, these increases all do reflect level services as you guys requested. Um, we'll start off with the new library building operating budget. Um, the Although it's called the new library building operating budget, as you all know, that library is not new. It's going to be turning 15 in April. <laughs> Catherine? Yes. We're still called the new library? Mm -hmm. It's, what, 15 years old now? It is 15 years old. <laughs> and that's, that's the name of the We're line. Going. We can We can take it out for Is that, for the, is that the line item name? That's the line. New library building. I think it's to distinguish it from ah, the library. Yeah. yeah. That makes so. sense. I'm happy, to, I'm happy to change that as long as it doesn't cause any problems for anyone else. But anyway. Um, the teenage. We could call it the teenage. Yeah. Okay. Um, we are requesting a total increase in that line of $4,968.84. Um, the majority of that is an additional $4,000 that would go towards our um, building repair um, line. Um, essentially, this year, um, the building's really just starting to show its age. Um, we're having a lot of items that um, just have our need of routine repair, and it just seems like that's gonna increase. Um, at this point, um, in FY19, we we have expended already the 4,000 that we had set aside for building repair. I mean, that was gone in November. Um, so what we're gonna do for the rest of the year is a little bit up in the air. Um, hopefully, we don't have to defer any maintenance, but. Um, for FY20, we really want to be prepared for whatever um, needs the building is going to have, and I do see some that are coming up that we will need to pay for. Um, so we are requesting that extra $4,000 for that line. Um, and hopefully we don't need it. It can go right back to the town, but we want it to be there just in case. Um, we just don't want to have any, any essential maintenance that needs to be deferred and causes further problems along the line. Um, Scott, does, does the, the library talk... In, in our permanent building committee so that that got morphed into capital improvement capital planning right and the capital planning's focus if i could just one second over the course of this past year was the uh, buildings assessment that was done by Roy brown associates and spent a fair amount on all of our buildings in, including including mm -hmm. the library i think there's a delineation tom between mr chair if i could between uh, what the capital uh, goals for the building are and what Catherine's talking about with respect to uh, building maintenance on an annualized basis. One you would be able to borrow for, one would be a much longer view, and I think what I'm hearing now is that we have some uh, maintenance needs that come up on an annualized basis that we've been, we're intersecting the line between what's been appropriated and the age of the building. Yeah, the, so, that, but there has a, been a full survey <clears throat> complete on that, and we're we're going with department heads you know, over the next month and a half, two months. The school's already started this, making sure that what the architect and engineers have identified meshes with what the you know the circumstance on the ground is. Yeah, and I guess that that's 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 one of my questions mm -hmm. is is building op building operations versus. And, and what what monies are available for building operations? Great point. You know, and and and, and I would say just because the lib the library again the library works under the board of trustees, okay. but but it, you know the 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 workings of the library are you know workings of the town hall the workings of that is it all rolls up under the town. Yep. So. No doubt about that. So is it it. How, how do we need to address those sure. operating? So the Capital Improvement Committee will be rolling forward with a capital plan over a 20-year trajectory. Yeah. And some of those trajectory, some of those trajectory elements are triannual maintenance, things like pointing of curbs, roof work, 
those kinds of elements. There's been a focus at the library this year on mechanical and automation, and that's been very, very successful. Mm -hmm. But that is something that was not necessarily budgeted and falls under the th below the threshold of what constitutes capital in some cases. Sort of that in-between region. Right. Well, I, if you just look at the chart on page one of Catherine's handout, um, where she goes through the kind of routine things that we paid them, we spent yes. basically $4,000 on. Yep. And you know, many of them are under $1,000. Yep. We're not talking, so I think capital planning is looking at things that cost a lot more Correct. and that you can plan ahead in advance. And this is like <clears throat> lock on the bathroom door work for a public building. Right. We have to fix it. Right, great points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for like the HVAC repairs, we did have capital funds for those, um, yep. but unfortunately our needs were beyond what, what we had planned for. Um, so in, the, in those cases, that had to come out of um, our make repair line. Great points. And, and, and the other thing is, is, and Sherry's actually started with ADA survey of the town. Right. So, I, I mean, and I, I see that in, in some, I had read earlier that some of the things that you had done this year were doing some work for ADA compliance. Well, maybe, maybe we, we need to get a handle on that mm -hmm. instead of, you know, we do, you know, one or two things. Sure. And maybe there's grants available to assist with that sure. ADA compliance. So, so with respect to ADA, that building is fully compliant. Yeah, and so this was so the this automatic is, door opener just broke, and that's that's half of our budget right there. It's yeah, a that, very that expensive piece of equipment. So they do break. They do break, and actually, the, one, um, the next set of doors, I'm starting to hear it. Um, so yeah. I'd like to have. So that's a repair to something we already have. So the yeah. building is compliant, but if it breaks, you gotta fix it. Okay, great point. Yeah. No problem. Um, and then the other increases that we're requesting in the the building line, um, you may know the town recently got a new phone system um, installed, so the library was part of that. Um, as such, the, the bill has increased as, by a significant amount. It's just, a, I think it's a better service, and so that's, you know, we're paying for that now. Um, and so we're requesting um, an additional $768.84 annually um, is what our anticipated costs are gonna be for those, those new phone lines. Um, and then also in the library cleaning budget, um, we don't have the exact bid yet. I know Sherry's working on that, um, but we are anticipating a 2.5% increase, so I, um, our budget reflects that as well. Are there any other questions about the, the building? If I could, Mr. Chair. Sure. Uh, if I could, Catherine, you mentioned increase in the, so the service change for the phone service has been good. Right. It's this, been okay. It's We're been still okay. working out the kinks. Got it. Um, and so is the is the increased mm -hmm. request an expansion of what is going on in the library or is it for contracted service? It's, it's for contracted, contracted service. service. It's the Got same, it. same functionality. Got it. Same amount of use essentially. Thank you. So moving on to the, the library expense line, we are requesting an additional $1,500 in that line. Um, usually this has been the line that gets the least amount of attention for us. It's usually our lowest priority. Um, however, that really is starting to catch up to us. Um, in the past four years, the average cost of materials, that's our books or DVDs or periodicals and everything, has increased by 4%. Um, and the really shocking number, our consortial membership fees have increased by 39% in the past four years. Um, it seems like a huge amount. We are getting a lot more than we were getting four years ago, and it is absolutely well worth it for us to be a member of CWMARS. I mean, that's that's our bread and butter, being a member of CWMARS. We get a huge benefit from them. Um, they actually sent out a statement recently that's saying Sunderland's benefits are about, we'd, we'd be spending about $2 million if we were to get all of the different items um, that we get for, for what we get um, by being a member of them. Um, so as such, we are requesting a little bit of extra money and we're hoping that that will, um, you know, help us from falling too far behind each year. And we'd like to be able, you know, part of level services being able to provide the same amount of new materials each year. We haven't been able to do as much, um, and so we're really trying to keep up with that. Um, and, uh, you know, our usual formula, I guess, for, for the library expense line is that we request it to be, you know, to meet the, um, 
materials expenditure requirements set by um, the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners for our state aid um, certification. Um, and so we ask it to cover, um, we ask for the town at least to pay for two thirds of the materials needed to meet that requirement, plus our CWMARS membership. And then the other one third of materials, we ask for private donations to, to, um, to spend on that. So that's mostly the Friends of the Sunderland Public Library who are raising funds every year. Um, all nine to ten thousand dollars every year um, that goes back into our collection and in his materials. So essentially, what the town provides us is not quite enough for what we need for state certification. Um, however, we realize it is a huge amount of money that we we need in order to make that. So we are happy to keep raising the funds. The problem is ultimately we we won't be able to raise that kind of money, you know keep increasing that year after year. So we do need to make sure that the town um, does contribute to that as well. I think we should point out that uh, people in town are very generous. So we do we run this annual book. Um, I'm sure, you all get a letter um, for the annual book fund, and but we feel like you know we are kind of maxed out at about what we can reasonably expect to be bringing in every year. It's been a pretty pretty steady threshold, and the ability to raise as well as the ability of the um, the donors match yeah you know we're trying to we're trying to be realistic about Got it. it thank you Are there any other questions about the material or the library expense line what's that right, did you have any other questions about the library expense line nope I'm all set David I'm good I'm all set. set thank you all set Catherine um, so Next up is the library support staff salaries. Um, we are requesting an additional $6,204.83 in this line. Um, I know that the personnel committee um, is working on a survey um, of town employee salaries that was appropriated at the last um, at town meeting. Um, however, I know they're, they're working on that still. So we don't have that data available. And so what we've done is we've um, used the same formula that we have for the past years on um, state um, Sorry, based on our support staff salary lines. Our goal is to make sure that our staff are paid um, the average of what comparable libraries at comparable libraries are being paid. So we've used the same formula as last year where we take um, the town of Sunderland's list of comparable towns um, and we, we subtracted three, the three towns that are not comparable to us and this is the same as last year. Um, Brimfield, Conway, and Hardwick were not including their salary data as you can see, they really are just not comparable to us at all. Um, however, we have kept the other towns in here as well. Um, and so you can kind of see in table two, um, the hourly rate of library staff at comparable towns, um, we, are, we are well below that. So it is our goal to make sure that we can get everyone up to those averages. Um, so while it does seem like it's, it's quite a large jump, at least percentage wise, um, ultimately, this is just, this is the average. It's not like we're going towards the high end of everything. Um, and we just want to make sure our, our staff are adequately paid for the work that they do. They've been working for us for a very long time. They work very hard. Um, they do a really good job. And I think that um, the least we could do is just offer them at least the average for what other people doing the same work could be paid. Um, and then the next figure is the library director salary. We're also requesting that the library director salary be brought up to the average as well of library directors based on those comparable lists. David, do you have anything to uh, say about the, the wage study? <coughs> um, we're going to be scheduling our first meeting this month to start going over that stuff. So, um, <clears throat> And then we'll kind of see how this fits into that. Yeah, I will say um, this is just because we don't have the results of that study yet. Um, I'd yep. love to work with the personnel committee on their study. Once we have those numbers, we can see how they match our own. Okay. This is the research that, that we've done just for libraries. Okay, thank you, David. Mm -hmm. I'll check, Kathleen. How's foot traffic? Very good. Circulation, um, program. Circulation, probably it's our busiest year. Um, I'm still waiting on one um, one reporting from the Boston Public Library's ebook circulation, but we're looking at um, hitting 70,000 this year. Hmm. Circulation last year was 68,000, I believe, so that's a big jump for us. I'm um, really happy about it. Visitors, 
down very slightly, maybe 1%. Nothing, nothing to worry about though, but everything's going really well. Very busy, you know, we had um, 16 knitters this morning and 18 people left the Qigong circle. Our parking lot was full. It's fantastic, you know, we're really happy to see that every Monday. Okay, thank you. Scott, you have questions? I don't at this point. I appreciate the quality of the information that's been brought forward, and like we do every year, we'll, we'll throw it in the grinder and find out what <laughs> we can make out of the other side of it. But I do value all the work that goes on at the library. Please be in touch if you guys have any questions along the way. We'll be happy to meet with you and discuss these things and explain any of the information I provided you with. Any questions? Good right now. Okay. Well, you always have the advantage and disadvantage of going first. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. Well, right now it's it's. I mean, Sherry starts starts putting together all the numbers into the into the into the form until there everything is put in the form. It's, it's difficult to. Uh, I need to know to see the going. picture. Yeah, um, I, I I know the wage study. We we kind of put uh, a lot of value in the wage study, um, so hopefully that's going to progress mm -hmm. soon. Soon, she's been in touch. We just have to schedule a meeting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions for us? Well, thank you for coming. Is that yes. the is that the wage study the personnel committee? Yep. Said they were going to do nine months ago, or it's usually um, what what we what we had um, said, Hollis, was that we want to do a um, instead of just looking at one one group, one set of employees, we want to look at the entire the entire breadth of the town to to try to get an understanding where our pay where our pay is or was whatever. Um, so we thought that would be it'd be better to take an entire wage survey, do a wage survey for everybody included. So, you know, you, you there's not there's not a lot of people that are advocating for the the, the highway department per se. Um, so we just want to try to be able to look at things objectively and put some numbers. It, numbers isn't to. there uh, an ability for those other departments like the library did to gather, I guess, publicly available data and just make a common sense uh, evaluation of towns that are similar. Uh, I know we did that for the library. We threw out the towns we felt weren't comparable. It's pretty subjective, I guess, but or can be, but I think we took an honest approach of taking that burden on ourselves. And David, David, can you speak to that? About? Yeah, we, we actually have been doing that for some stuff, but honestly, it's actually kind of tough sometimes. I know the survey person was having an issue getting information. information. You'd think it would be easy. And one of, the, one of my pet peeves with this whole process is it's all public. I wish there was somebody who kept a, a, an ongoing public database of this information in one spot, but there isn't. So it's actually kind of a pain to get the information. It's so nowhere, not as easy as you'd expect. The other issue that we ran into was the criteria for what is a comp community, you know? Exactly. Define is it like population? Like is it budget? Or what are all the like different... Like services. Yeah. And, and as we've seen in the past, there can be many arguments going back and forth about what that comp list is and everything. And that, that can be a challenge in and Market, of itself. Market um, was one of the other things that she right. brought up when we um, gave, we submitted <laughs> some of the towns that we thought you know, would be good comp towns. And after she looked at them, you know, there were a few that she didn't really 
feel were comparable because um, we were in the lower sure. end um, as far as ability to pay mm -hmm. um, than some of those other communities who at first look look like they're comparable communities to us but for one reason or another are not so there's a lot to consider mm -hmm. Yeah, because they, they, they look at things like EQV and a number of other things like that, that that factor in, because you might have a town that has the same population, but like you said, a much higher ability to pay for something than, than we do. <clears throat> All boils down to Hollis, are you buying or are you selling? <laughs> right? You like the price if you're selling. You don't necessarily always like the price if you're buying. So... So I, I guess I said, so I guess what they're saying, what, what I take out of it is that um, just looking at, I mean, if you just looked at population, you could look at Sheffield and say Sheffield's a perfect example of a, comp, a comparable town. Well, but then you look at, you know, their eat, their median price and what, you yeah, know, the median home price, the median home price and when you look at what they call the <clears throat> EQV was equalization value, which is an indication of the ability of a town's um, population to be able to pay, you look at those and they may, it may show that you're not really, you may have the same population, but you don't have the, the, same, the same ability. Well, we looked at store or, you know, library hours and circulation, and so we had some yeah. common no. platforms or things we were looking for. In, deciding which town was was comparable so we didn't stuff the deck um, in our numbers with you know low budget uh, or high-end towns or anything I think we kind of stripped uh, can, can I ask you then when and, and this is just a question when 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 you look at a town when, when I look look at a thing when I look at the, the comparison um, there, there's, and you mentioned it about the number of hours that are open. Why, someone would say, well, the town of Sunderland's open 40 hours a week. The town of Conway's open 12, Hardworks open 20, Brimfields are open 28. Now, some could say, why, why isn't everybody open 40 hours? And, and so. So sometimes, so some sometime you say, well, we're open 40 hours because there's a thought that we need to be open for 40 hours a week. But then you have to say, do we have the ability to pay for it to be open 40 hours a week? And and what what are the what are the necessary what you know what are the required what are the required hours that you have to be open? So th th those are questions that you have to ask. Um, and we do it every every budget year. That's what becomes the the uncomfortable part is you have to ask those uh, you know uncomfortable questions. So so all of a sudden you know some in, in Brimfield back to the glasses unfortunately <laughs> number Brim, ten fine number ten thank you Scott <laughs> you know so so Brimfield and it, it's not on here but Brimfield you know Sunderland director is making you know. X amount of dollars an hour, the Brimfield director is making X plus five dollars an hour more. Well, the Brimfield director is only getting paid for 28 hours, so the salary is less, so there's less stress or less impact on on the budget. So those are all questions that we have to go through, and 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 I think that's one one thing the library trustees and the friends of the library when they make their presentation, Hollis, in, in my opinion, one of the strengths of the library is the presentations that they put together. So it, it's hard, I, I think it's, it's, I think you have to look at, in my opinion, again, what the library does on the whole for the com community and, and understand what the library does and what those 40 hours does. And I think it, to me, it's more than that, X, comp, X town pays this amount, so every town needs to pay this amount. I think each town gets different benefits sure. out, out of I would of say it's a badge benefits. of honor to be open yeah. 40 hours a week for the town of... I think yeah. our use it justifies it as well. I mean, I, we, we're busy all the time. We, see, we, we look at the numbers. I mean, it's not that 
I mean, so Brimfield's open 28 hours a week, we're open 40. We still serve 47,629 visitors a year. They serve 6,800, sorry, 6,078 visitors a year. I mean, there's 12 hours less and we're seeing that many more people. I mean, there's a demand for what we're offering. Right. Oh, and, 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 and again, that's, that's that's part of that's part of the process is understanding what those forty hours of, of week brings to the community. Absolutely. Um, I just want to go back to the idea of, of finding comparable towns and doing you know some kind of wage survey. Every time we do the budget, we talk about it, talk about the difficulties, but that. I've been hearing that for so many years, and I just wonder, are, I assume that we're working on it in between budget seasons, and can't, it just seems like we could find, you know, even if our comps are only five towns, that we could definitely say we're comparable, or, or find 10, that we could find something so that every year during budget time, it's not the same, well, we don't, have Great point. Pops. Agreed. Good point. And I, I think Dave, David tried to, David tried to. Um, that was one of the things David, was, I think, was trying to, to express is the. Um, it, it's. Yes, they they do work on it. <laughs> they yeah, do work on it round. between the budget yes. cycles, and I and I think, we thought it was, well. I thought it would be easier than what it's proven to be to find to identify the comp towns um because we, we we've talked about to get about them to respond <laughs> right it's not that we don't have we've had comp towns before but it's one of those things too where you you can't just pick a list and then then stick with that forever because you have to periodically revisit it as well because things change from one town to another so you you want to come up with a baseline and then occasionally revisit that too and then just one other point is when I first heard about this when you're like well we have to um, we can't just take care of the library employees we have to take care of all the other employees in town except that we're really talking about seven or eight other employees because the other ones are are um, are under contract mm -hmm. under negotiated contracts right collective bargaining agreements and so I understand I understand that it's probably difficult to find the information, but if you're looking for one of the people's, like the, I don't even know the names, the director of the, uh, whatever George is. The sure, director. the highway department. Yeah. You can't go to like seven towns and find that information. I mean, even if you have to do it all by hand, it, I'm just confused that. <clears throat> well, here's a chance. Let's look at, and this is the one thing we've had with them. With that position in particular, what one town calls highway director varies dramatically from town to yeah. town. So you can't just say, okay, give me, I mean, in theory, you could go and say, okay, give me the salary for whatever the position is for every town in the county. But what each of those persons, their actual job responsibilities are, actually varies widely from town to town. And that's one of the things that we try to, and especially through this, is we're trying to factor in. We want to delve deeper than just a job title and a salary number because that never gives you enough information. <clears throat> so it's, and, and we thought it would be easier. And one of the things that we're trying to do is, is to make this process easier going forwards because it's, it's a lot more painful than we want it to be, you know, and it, it's frustrating. So I've got to say that's exactly what we do when we give you these numbers every year on salaries because we know, um, as Catherine is pointing out, based on the library that's circulating 6,000 items is not providing the same kind of service right. that we're providing regardless of what other criteria might be. And I think whatever list you come up with, you may also find that of the 20 towns or whatever, 15 towns we want to look at, these three shouldn't, don't really reflect this comparable library service, and these three may not reflect comparable mm -hmm. highway service, or they may not right. reflect fire service because maybe they're being served by another town. I mean, there's all there's a lot so of you have to things use to factor in. Yep. In addition to looking at the data. 
and that's what we always try to get to when we present it ourselves. So I think as Catherine stated, we're very happy to look at, at to work with everyone on the salary survey, but you know, here we are back at budget season and we're just anxious to see it and you know, we, we're pretty comfortable with our numbers, but we're curious to see what else comes up. And David or the board, um, these other seven or eight highway positions, are those full-time, 40-hour-a-week uh, roles? Well, I, I think what's, that was said, Hollis, there's seven or eight other positions. They're not, like yeah, we have three, highway. there's three, well, there's, there's, there's three in the highway department. There's treasurer, there's treasurer, well, the treasurer collector, collector the there's assessor. the accountant, there's your administrative assistant, the, the selectman's administrative assistant, you have an assessor. You have you have the assessors, you have the town clerk. So there there's the, you know, you have the building building, building inspectors. Inspector. There, there may the be most more forty hour a week in general. Some of them some are, are some, are. some of them are. Yeah. The um they're they're at least some of them are most of them are at thirty two at least thirty two hours a week. Yeah. So because our requests are mostly Catherine's full time, obviously, but our, everyone else is part time, and the salaries are somewhat teetering around what's going to become minimum wage. So part time and pretty lower and wage uh, range, I would say. Well, see, it, but I, I mean, again, I, I, and again, the the personnel committee is working on the wage survey. I would I would hope that they're going to have they're going to have a number for the for this for year, mm -hmm. and, and and at that time as soon as we get those numbers we'll we'll think, I, I you know I can tell you if you want to tell you right now we're going to accept your budget we're going to give you everything that you have in your budget. Awesome. But <laughs> but unfortunately everybody in this room would t tell you well, he, he can't say that. I I don't I, I really don't know what I don't know we're, we're I I think right now what we do is we. The, the best part about the budgets that put together by the library and the, and the early people or the earlier earlier groups is that it gives a town your you're setting the um, you're setting the stage you're letting us know what your needs are and these are our preliminary conversations I mean you, I always personally I always thought it was very difficult to put together in a budget 18 19 20 months before you're actually going to put it in I have I've I always said and if, if someone told me last year at this time that oil on the barrel is going to be costing forty five dollars a barrel, well, I told you you're going to be nuts. Um, but that's where we're standing. That's where we're standing right now. Um, if, my if, my basic you know, uh, message was that from a budget standpoint, our request is yeah not and, that impact, impacting towards the town. It, but in, in, and I and again, it's a, the the, the the presentation and and now I'm sure Sherry and and Catherine are going to be talking weekly, if not daily, about what what happens with the budget. Sure. I think they talk all the time. As it is, they they also once a month, once a month, right? So yeah, yeah. department. They have they have a department head meeting where where they're reviewing the the budget. Um, Catherine, I could. I, one thing I like in Catherine's proposal, she's telling us where she stands on, on the percentage of budget being used right now. Um, th those are all things that help us, you know, see. And again, you you would think your your employee wage, but would be about fifty percent because you're fifty percent through the through the year. But I, I also but I look at the other expenses. You know, those are those are the expenses that that. I pay attention to because it tells me about what the needs are, building needs, the uh, what what are you doing on the elsewhere, buying materials and stuff like that. Those those are important numbers to me to see how they're progressing. So, and and we kind of look at that. We look at that every two weeks. We get a summary of the uh, the build, the budgets. So we we kind of have a grasp of where people are spending their money. Also, so. Well, Catherine deserves a raise because she's now a geothermal um, <laughs> professional sure. technician. One of our patrons had like had a book on hold, like all about geothermal pumps. It's like, oh, why didn't I even check that out? Oh, I'm next on the list. <laughs> and, and again, we, we're we're very lucky to have dedicated people and staff that work in our our town. 
appreciate your consideration. Thank you. We do. We will. Thank you, Hollis. Anything else, Catherine? I mean, thank you. Thank you all. Okay, guys. Thanks thank so you very much. Okay. So, so Dave, what what do you what do you think is just is going to be the status of that wage review? I guess that's a good way to start talking. Where do you where do you, where do you think that's going to go? You know, I, we've got to see it. I think to see like what because I'm going to be very, I'm very interested to see what they recommend and yeah. what we what can kind of try to schedule a meeting. Mm -hmm. It might be beginning of February unless we. Yeah. Well, it, it, it'd be it'd be nice. It, I and again, it, it's an, it is an important thing. Yeah. Um, I got and, and you know, I, I think I think sometimes it, it's more. It does seem it does seem easy it does seem easier, um, or easy to do. It says we'll just get three, four, five comparable towns. <laughs> we I wish it was, it was that easy. Done long ago. Did it we I tried it last yeah, year. I, remember? I think so. I, I you know, it, it's. I, I always thought that I always thought it, it's much more difficult than. You know, it's comparing A to A to B. It's yeah. it's not that easy. Right. It's not, and then you'd like you say you're trying to look at job descriptions where the responsibilities are the same, and then, you know, we have a highway superintendent. Other towns have DPW directors. We have an appointed treasurer collector. In some towns, yeah, those are two exactly. different positions, and they might be elected. And it's there's just a lot of different dynamics that. Well, you have you have one town here to the south of us on on this on this That's list, cheap. right? And and when when you look at the population is fifty three hundred people, we're thirty six hundred people. Now we say, well, it's fourteen hundred people. How much difference is it in the town? Well, if you went to that other town, they have they have. Uh, a treasurer, an assistant treasurer, and then they have two staff members in yes. that department. Mm -hmm. Right. We have a treasurer collector mm -hmm. with not a lot of other support. We have a payroll clerk. Right. What, 10 hours a week, 12 hours a week, something I like that? I think it's five or something. Five it's hours even, a week. Yeah. Um, but it's a lot, and, but there's only a difference of 1,400 people. But, and then, you know, you look at the accounting. We have a paid for service accounting. That that they give us fourteen hours a week. Eleven, and that's 11. They want to they want to go up. <laughs> they have eleven hours a week. They're Yet that, that that same town has an accountant and has an assistant accountant, right. and 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 clerical staff there as well. You know, so. Well, and that, that gets back to the the issue of just when you think of just doing the footwork and the research to get all of this, I mean, we don't have anybody who can sit around and really do that. Right. It takes it's a, a lot, lot of, work. of time. Exactly. We were actually last year when we were trying to put it together, you know, making phone calls and, oh, I bet. you know, yeah. following up with emails, trying to... In, and in people a, who don't reply back and, yeah. Part-time towns that don't have staff to, you know, there to answer the... It, it was it's a lot of work. Understood. That said, Mr. Chair, I think it's important to bear in mind that we can talk about population, staff, EQVs, but also uh, lost in that discussion is what type of program are you actually putting on? Yep, that's true. As right. far as like services, what are you right. offering what, for services? What service are you actually providing? And at some point, the question becomes, do we need to do those levels of services? Um, that That's the, that's the, the big question a lot of times, Scott. Can, can, can you afford to maintain those programs? Correct. And again, the EQV, the ability to pay the population, all of that stuff, job titles and the like. But if you look at the, the sheer volumes of some of the things that we do, Sunderland continues to be trapped in that um, not too small and not too medium a sized town with all of the problems in and around that. A solid elementary school base. We don't. We're not. We're not. Um, we're not Monroe. We don't have Monroe's problems on that side. But we have a pretty solid expense when it comes to education. We have a pretty solid expense when it comes to public safety because of the nature of where we actually sit and the type of population that we actually have. Right. 
we were talking earlier tonight about uh, downstairs about the request from the fire department. Well, why is the fire department budget going up so much? Well, the number of responses. So those kinds of pressures um, can challenge the traditional characterization of uh, the town. You know, we're a happy agricultural community. Frankly, we're not. So I get it. We have a lot of open space. A lot of people work really, really hard in the land, but there's also a lot of other influences in and around the community. Well, especially when you look at the types of towns we're surrounded. Right. It's not as if sure. we're surrounded completely yeah. by like-sized right. small communities. Anyway, so I think program, mm -hmm. I'm circling back to the subject. Yep. Program, the question about the program is also important. How much can you actually do? And sadly, sometimes programs get legs under them and they simply take off. Okay. All right, next up we have the uh, approval of the minutes of uh, December 17th. To entertain a motion. With a motion on those. A motion. I'll second. A motion made, seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the minute of approving the minutes of December 17th as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Next up is the uh, Board of Selectmen updates. What do you got there, Davey? Uh, well, personnel committee stuff. And then uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to be actually, I'll be uh, sending out some suggested updates to the um, the ditch charter mm -hmm. for that shortly. So, because I, I think we need to make some tweaks to the to that to, um, to make sure, because I'd like for this whole process to kind of resolve a lot of the, the long questions and things like that have been out there historically. So I want to make sure that we incorporate that in in an updated charter, you know, to make sure that we come out. Because I know it's just like, a, it, just like one example, like a lot of things that we're calling drainage ditches, well, let's face it, they're not. They're actually perennial streams. So like I want to make sure that we come out of this with clear definitions of what things really are and things like that. <clears throat> So, so good point, David. Now that you start talking about the uh, the um, ditches, did we, um, Sherry? Have you worked up partly of the uh, the charge for the committee? I saw we had uh, had a uh, potential <coughs> charge, right? Yep. Yeah. On before. Um, so can can we bring that can, can we bring that to our next meeting so sure. that we can mm -hmm. vote the charge? Mm -hmm. so, as soon as we vote the charge, then uh, we can we can. Uh, we can formalize a committee right. and, and again put it out there for anybody. I mean, we have a couple names of people that want to volunteer on the committee, but we always could use another a couple members. So I, again, I put it out there if you would like to get involved. I'm not looking at the this committee being a long term. <coughs> long term. Right. I, I think it should be. Uh, That's yeah, right? I mean, I mean, it's, it's neat, neat. I, and, and again. What I mean is, why I mean is that I, I would think it'd be more fact finding and yes. and bringing information to the table, um, and then and then when they come back and make the report, I mean at that point we'd have to maybe step back and see you know which direction that we'd want to go, but I, I would I would hope that we'd be able to to get a report from them fairly fairly soon. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's, it won't be a permanent committee, that's for sure. It, yeah, it's not yeah. I, well. Well, maybe someday it would turn into being a permanent <clears throat> committee, but. I'm not saying that that's what it's right now. Are you thinking one year or how? Well, I would I would hope I would I would hope that we'd be able to come back and and we we would expect we would expect a report from them by the end of the summer, mm -hmm. right? Because okay. we already have that initial report, which already okay. did a lot of the, the homework done. things, right? Yeah. And you know, I think that. Well, and that, that kind of leads me too to one of the things too. I want to I want to set expectations up front too, because especially when you read through the report, one of my concerns is that a number of the concerns that folks have, you know, even if we just let's say we snapped our fingers, we went through and dredged everything, it may not resolve a number of the issues that are out there still. You know, so that's one of the things that people have to be aware of. Absolutely. <clears throat> and I did save because it was. Uh, there was a nice article in the paper recently about, um, and they posted a lovely chart of the uh, precipitation and the increase, like since they started tracking it, what was it, like 1850 or so, yeah, somewhere around there? Yep. 
so it's very interesting. I, I actually saved that. I have that on my file with all the other stuff. So, and and and, and I and I, what I what I'd like to add to that, Davey, is I I, I think that, um. I, I think there's everybody recognizes it's been a a, a wet year this year, but I, I would like to be able to. Uh, I'd like to put a plan together um, so that we can um, you, you know a, a couple of years ago we worked on and I think Scott will attest to this we worked on um, a free cash use policy yes. or fund, a fund policy mm -hmm. and, and so now when we look at free cash stabilization um, we, we look at this funding we, we have a we have a we have a formula that we can look at and, and that we use that as a guide right and, and I would hope that when we're when we're when we progress one of the things that we should get from this survey study is that there, there's a guide so that when we go forward we know how we're, we know how and the next board will know how, and the board after that will exactly. know what's been done in the past. Right. Um, so, so I, th I think if we can get end up with something like that, I mean, that would be my goal, so that people could say, okay, this is this is the expectation. Yep. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Right. And, and you're right. Even by your definition, by well, that really is not a ditch because that's a that's a stream. Right. And just because somebody's called it that doesn't mean you know and it's one of those things too that we have to factor in what are the realities now and the regulations we face now and everything whereas you know it might have been different you know 30 40 years ago we've got to deal with the realities on the ground now yeah and how do we resolve you know whatever problems we've got to resolve mm -hmm. yeah so okay yeah um <clears throat> did you want to speak on that mr mr jerry uh, I'm just glad you haven't forgotten about it. No, no, we definitely <laughs> have not forgotten about it. That's why I'm here, just so you're... <coughs> yeah. You're so oh, no, no, no. And, and, and actually, sometimes the... Um, we have found, so you know, we have found if we, we form a committee without a charge, yeah. it doesn't go anywhere. Right. And, and we usually like to give our committees a something that they're shooting at. Now, they may change. It may ch it may yeah, change a little bit after, you discover something, but we have but to we we like to have something written <clears throat> so that it there's at least fo they're focused on on a process because if we don't we usually end up so yeah. and, gotta send and, them in a direction and we'll 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 put the I, Sherry has has passed around a couple things on the charge and and we'll uh, we each well she gives it to us and we look at it we make comments to her didn't she does her magic and we have something so hopefully <laughs> hopefully next yes. week we'll be able to we'll, we'll come up with a charge for that yeah. very good okay yeah we, yeah, we, we definitely not. have not forgotten about it no <laughs> no. no okay okay thank you Jim. um okay. anything else Davey? Thanks. uh I so, think so you got enough. you got two things on your plate yep two right. fun exciting things I'm dying to see the personnel thing because I'm yeah. going to be really curious to see if there's and if there's some new approaches to things, you know. Yeah. All right. Anything else? No. Um, Scott, Mr. Chair, if I could, uh, the recommendation from the Frontier Capital Improvement, I guess, subcommittee uh, for form format total debt service uh, was recommended at our last meeting last week and sent this to this week's uh, Frontier Regional School Committee. The outline is to minimize the borrowing authorization to its original, considerably lower than its original request, and then to implement a series of programs that hopefully will um, keep the building in the shape that it's currently in or better over time of use and you know from your, your professional life how, how hard that can be balancing the amount of funds needed over the course of time for a, a building that's used that way so that's set for I think it's tomorrow it's tomorrow night they're meeting like it's tomorrow, tomorrow night so it's, it's on the agenda for the full school committee and if that uh, recommendation is adopted I, I would expect that uh, for the 
2020 budget cycle, we would see a debt authorization request from uh, fr from the district, mm -hmm. and that debt authorization request, uh, depending on the community, may may include um, may include uh, debt exclusion. I don't think that's the case of the town of Sunderland, based on the assessment that was structured. We'll see what the school committee adopts. Second piece is we're on the third, we've had our third meeting now uh, with the labor unit, t frontier teachers, and unit C, units A and C. And uh, we have some tentative, tentative agreements already, and we're uh, quickly rolling into uh, the financial side of those negotiations. And I give, I, give, I give the administration a fair amount of credit for, as well as the uh, both groups negotiating for understanding going in early that there are some things that are pretty quick to act on and uh, without long lasting either workplace uh, impacts or uh, financial impacts. So now you know, the goodwill is set and now we'll sit down and really look for the whites of each other's eyes. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Um, South County EMS, uh, mm -hmm. we met last last um, last week last Thursday um, looks like South County is having a problem with its it's um, one of its vehicles that they're spending an exorbitant amount of money to, to maintain it so um, the director is asking for an acceleration of one year on, on buying the next vehicle so we've had we've been discussing back and forth the um, um, earned income retainings and and how much comes back to the town and and the problems with stacking you know stacking new truck on top of a new truck on top of a new truck versus spreading it out um, so we've been, we've been talking about some of that but we're also coming to the realization also that um, we're up to over 1100 calls now sure. versus and um, we actually, after AMR took over for Medway up in up at uh, in Greenfield, we we actually made a call to one or two calls to Charlemont and and uh, mm. Greenfield. We did 32 calls and we did a number of calls to Montague and huh. and and so so we're talking about we're talking about that dynamic about. Um, but because we're making more calls, mm -hmm. we're putting more miles on, on the equipment as well. Um, that being said, um, South County is doing great things with um, their, their putting together. They, they have a class going together, and they're outreaching into the community now. Um, it's called Stop the Bleed, mm -hmm. so that um, you're going to teach um, first responders or people at the schools or um, even at even at a seven minute average call call um, someone can bleed out yes in, in that amount of time so they're putting together um, packages um, you know that includes tourniquets and how to use tourniquets and and how to stop the bleeding mm -hmm. and so to uh, prolong the time until the ambulance get there mm -hmm. so they're actually outreaching they're doing outreach to the community right now um, we keep getting we keep getting letters and emails and and people stopping you on the street telling you about the good job that they're doing mm -hmm. that the South County is doing um, so so and, and that and that's good to hear um, and it was interesting in our conversation because we're talking about the rent, mm -hmm. um, mm. the cost of the rent now, mm. and and that was a, a very interesting conversation because one one of the Deerfield um, members of the committee, um, who happens to be a selectman, also said that what the way he envisions it is that the entire rent is placed into an account that will be used to. Um, fund repairs and maintenance and upkeep of the building um, and, and I and I was sitting there going wow I mean 
this is, I mean, a municipality only wishes it had that ability. Right. And, and Scott was earlier, and, and Catherine was talking about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be nice to say, okay, every person that comes in, you, you, when you borrow a book, you pay uh, ten cents because well, that's going to go into the fund. That's going to go to the fund that's going to be replacing the roof tiles or or or, or the geothermal, mm -hmm. right, one of the pumps or something. Yeah. And, and and so I was kind of, I was kind of chuckling to myself because we can't do that. But all of a sudden, this building that that uh, Deerfield Academy graciously donated to the town. Uh, and to, in South County EMS is all of a sudden we have that ability to be putting thirty six thousand dollars a year into that account that that used for, for perpetual. So when you need a roof, it's not going back. To, mm -hmm. It's not going back and trying to fight about it because you no, know, the money's already there. Or when you got to repave the parking lot or repair the the overhead doors. That's a ten foot doors for the ambulance. Mm -hmm. You don't have. Her. 10 foot, 12 foot, whatever, 12 foot door, whatever it is, you don't have to worry about that because the money will probably be there. Now, of course, the state of Massachusetts, in, 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 its, in, right. in its infinite wisdom, has made it not so easy because now we have to set up a, a, a fund and mm -hmm. it has to be voted by the town of Deerfield because right. they're the keeper of the, that fund. And, and so now our, our worries is that, and, and then, and then, one of the people said, he said, well, maybe, you know, if that ever happened, maybe if that scenario happened where they'd be thinking about not doing something, they would have better better thoughts because they look at the success of this program. So I, I, I just think that I it, it was it was it's an interesting meeting. Um, South South County is, is doing a lot of good things. Um, we're growing. We're still trying to figure some things out, especially with the budgets and stuff. But it, it's going the right direction. Uh, South County Senior Center. Um, we're still looking for people that look, like to serve on the on the uh, on the um, um, cultural not cultural council, but the uh, uh, council on aging. Is that what it's what's that? The aging council. Is that council of aging. aging. Yes, yeah. it David. So we're still looking for members that <coughs> want to serve on the council of aging. Um, they, we have the, the director has been there for approximately six months, um, and and hopefully we're going to broaden broaden the the services that are being offered, and and with those broadening of the services, we're hopefully uh, um, going to include more people. Um, we also I also was at the uh, Franklin County, the FERCOG Franklin Regional Council of Government meeting. Um, their their impacts of the town, their budgets are going to be pretty nominal this year. It appears um, their 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 January meeting is where they they make their presentation to the to the full council. But they didn't from the conversation. It, it didn't appear anything to be earth shattering in that um, thing. So that's that's it for me, Sherry, town town administrator. Um. We have an opportunity to apply for grant funds for Safe Routes to School um, grant program for um, putting in uh, sidewalks up to the school or um, rehabbing the existing sidewalks 1,200 feet. So um, I wanted to know if that's something that the board would sure. be interested. Would There's so. no match. Um, would these be the sidewalks only on Swampfield? Um, this would Because Old Amherst Road has been done. Yes, it would just be up the driveway just there. Just small Yep. Okay, thank you. 1,200 linear feet of mm -hmm. sidewalk, school zone warning signs and tactile warning tiles. Mm -hmm. um, it would improve access through the property, removing barriers on the west side as well. Um, so we do have an um, estimate for the project. It's just at right around $70,000, so it's not a real big project, mm -hmm. um, but we're hoping that we might be able to get funding. Okay. The school's That'll supportive of the application, so good. It's due on Friday, so I just want to make sure yeah. it's okay with the board. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Uh, motion to motion to encourage that application. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Three zero. And then the other thing that I just wanted to bring to your attention, um, we were covered for the. Um, transformer incident where we lost the emails and had other 
um, problems under our insurance coverage. We have uh, cyber protection. However, there's a $7,500 deductible on that. Um, so I did put in a reserve fund uh, transfer request because there wasn't enough funds in the insurance budget to cover. So no, nothing from uh, Eversource, huh? Not yet. I'm going to reach out to them and see. I wish I knew. I had a meeting with them today. Uh, mm. um, we've already spent, well, in excess of $10,000 and still a bit ongoing yet. So. Okay. Thank you, Sherry. Anything else? That's it. Okay. All righty. Um, Got a full house. Anybody else want to add anything? <laughs> <laughs> we did have some folks in there earlier. <laughs> I know. Yep. Um, uh, new business. We have a uh, letter of resignation. Mr. Clerk. Hmm, let's see if I can dig that up, Mr. Chair. I have a ditch committee challenge. Yeah, I was shuffling papers. I don't think the copy of that is in here. But I didn't see it. I, didn't see I think. It. Let's just see here. Be well, we know that Tom Zimnowski is is rushing to step down from his uh, position as FCAT member of the board and claiming that he wanted to continue with something with video in the future. Right. It was cagey about it. So he was <laughs> something, the Tom Z channel. Um, the Tom Z. Well, Tom maybe Z. Yeah, I, heard, I, I, heard, I heard that... Uh, uh, state Senator, former State Senator right. Rosenberg is going to have his own TV program on uh, Amherst Community That's TV. Right. There you have it. Maybe Tom will so start maybe, his maybe, own YouTube channel. Yeah, Tom will start a YouTube channel. So, All right. I, so I, w I would say, Mr. Chair, accepting Tom's motion to accept Tom's resignation, uh, we can read this letter specifically at another meeting if it's colorful and jaunty because those knows he's That's it's not. Pretty, oh, it's pretty cool. All right. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping for a little that, more. That's a motion, motion to uh, accept mm -hmm. Tom's resignation from the FCAT Board of Directors. Uh, motion with uh, thanks for prior service. I'll second. Appreciate it. Yeah, motion made and seconded. All those in favor to uh, accept Tom's resignation with your regrets, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Sherry, review and approve of mm -hmm. special town meeting warrant articles. All right, shoot it. Okay, um, so uh, town council has reviewed them and we're going to condense one and two into one article and that would be for the easements for imminent domain takings for the Hadley Road projects. So do you wanna work off from yeah, right hand I just want <laughs> um, the bigger font. Yeah, the yeah. one. <laughs> I'll work off the big page or the little one? paper. The big page is. All right, we're gonna work off the big for paper. me, and then I'll revise based okay. on what. Okay, that's um, good. So tonight's goal is uh, moving to include. Yes. Okay, and are we looking to recommend as well? Correct. All right, so so okay. typically, before we go too far, mm -hmm. typically our board has not. For the last 20 years, Scott, mm -hmm. we we haven't we we try not to uh, do special town meetings during the course of the year, except there the items that come up where that necessitate right. a meeting. We've actually over the years have been pretty good at that. Um, we we are going to be calling a special town meeting for Monday, the 28th of January, at 7 p.m. And we're going to have a few articles, and most of these articles are are going to be specific articles to take care of specific problems mm -hmm. that need to be addressed. Right. Um, so the first one is um, it's actually the first two. If I could the miss the chair, they're going to be combined. Yeah, yep. one and two are going to be combined, and and basically what what they're what they're going to be doing is that we are working on and most of you have seen the sidewalk work that went on involved along old amherst road mm -hmm. and along south main yeah. street and garage, garage. Road. and garage, garage road, road. Yep. and what we what we part of the plan was to do some work on hadley road mm -hmm. and also um extending the, the road or the sidewalks down to um Sugarloaf Sugar Estates. Estates. Right. 
when when we went to put in when we went to put in the sidewalks along Hadley Road, we found that the first section was going to encroach on on the landowner's property because the road really wasn't where it was supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. We found out. Yeah, it's crazy. Then we found out that to uh, continue the sidewalk down to Sugarloaf Estates, we needed, we were going to again go on a landowner's yep. land, yep. so we needed that, we need to address that, and we do that uh, through eminent domain in this case. Mm -hmm. But the eminent domain, you can have content, con um, contentious right. eminent domains, right. and then you can work together with the landowners to try to come to an understanding, and that's how we're trying to do with both of these. Right. And they, they're not Correct. content, as I understand, they're not contentious. Right. They're just, this is the easiest, cleanest right. way to, to make it happen. And to facilitate the completion of the project before the grant round ends. Right, and the grant round. 30th. And that's important. Right, and, and, so, and so if you happen to look on the continuation of South Main Street River Road, going down Sugarloaf Estates, uh, there's been a marked improvement now that we have sidewalks there yes, for the usability. people to safely walk alongside the road mm -hmm. instead of walking in the road or in the dirt. Right. Right. And hopefully that's going to happen as well if, pe if you ever traveled on Hadley Road mm -hmm. when people have been walking on it, it's at times very difficult. So that's what we're trying to do on so, that road. Yeah, this is the last piece of our complete streets project. It's uh, about eighty thousand dollars worth of work that's still set aside grant funds to pay for the work. So we want to finish it um, by June thirtieth. They did give us an extension um, right. to June thirtieth, but we so we could also apply for the yeah. next round. Yeah. And in order to apply for the next round, you have to expend all funds from the this round. round. Yeah. Um, so that's our hope there. Um, preliminarily, um, I, it's just under $3,000 um, to pay the, the damages, they mm -hmm. call it, for mm -hmm. those takings. Um, so it's not a lot of money to get a, a lot. That's good so point. the town's cost is just under $3,000 for $81,000 worth of work. And, 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 and in watching the uh, the negotiation from afar, they they've been. Um, I thought the landowners have been very fair. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So good points. And well, I, I think they've been they've been really fair, mm -hmm. and they 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 wanted to work with the towns, and and this is the easy, this is easiest. So that's Article One. So should we need a article to include motion yes. to include. It's actually going to be a combined article. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. So final language to be determined by town council. Okay. All those in favor to include, signify by Second. saying aye. 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 Um, do you want do you want to rec make recommendations at this time also? Yeah, I would recommend Article One as amended by town council. Second. A motion made and seconded to a, a recommend the combination of one and two article, which is the land taking for the continuation of the sidewalks on Hadley Road. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 So we have Board of Selectmen 3-0 recommendation. Article 3. Um, so this was the other thing that necessitated our need for a special town meeting. We were awarded a, a grant under the Small Town Housing Choice Community Capital Grant Program for um, design for improvements on, on School Street here. And that is a reimbursable grant. Um, so that grant is $71,438 and will be reimbursed 100% by the Commonwealth um, under that program. So the mechanism here is we take it out of an available fund mm -hmm. and in a future town meeting once it's reimbursed we have to ensure to channel it back to the said the fund. fund. Whether that's right. stabilization um, or free cash. Mm -hmm. yeah, stabilization. Okay. Stabilization. I would think the challenge with stabilization is depending on how the grant comes back in, the accountant accounts for it. We have to reappropriate. We have to reappropriate. Yeah, we'll just. But it's got to be tracked bit. going in. I guess yeah. is what right. I'm driving so you at. Know yeah. Where. yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, move to include uh, 
what's now going to be Article 2, and that's the reimbursable grant for the Small Town Choice Community Capital Program. Second. Motion made and seconded on Article 2. Two. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You have three zero on that. Article 4, or 3, yep. is the seat of town will vote to amend the zoning bylaws as follows. So, so basically, from that, this, this four pages. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just a lot. The next, the next four pages deals with um, uh, marijuana. Mm -hmm. The bylaws of the uh, that would reflect in the town of Sunderland to deal with marijuana. Mm -hmm. So, right. so this is coming from this is working through the planning board. Um, and following, and, and this is just, I mean, this is what the other towns, all the towns around us are having to do now. Um, and, and so that's the ad, we adding stuff to the, uh, the use table about cultivation of marijuana, the building up to 10,000 square feet, uh, the manufacturing processing, um, that can be in a, uh, commercial zone in its uh, the storage warehousing transportation all of that it, it defines how how it can be done in the mm -hmm. town of some of the retail store everything so that's all in this and that's for the first four pages this will all be online so if someone wants to uh, read it and then, Talk a of plan, right. and, then a, and then a cliff notes about what the changes actually are. What's reflected, of course, here in the in the in the warrant is the full adoption tables of planning. Yes, that's what it is. So, but there may only be seven changes. Right. So it's important we're we're adopting an, not an amendment, but the actual use tables rewritten. Yep. And so again, the changes aren't specific to anything other than these cultivation, processing, retailing, et cetera, of marijuana to make sure they can be incorporated. Beyond that, there's not a lot of change. Right. Okay, so the bylaws? Uh, move to include, uh, as presented by the Planning Board. Second. Motion to include. All those in favor, as uh, made and seconded, all those in favor of inclusion, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Recommendation? Move to recommend, as presented by the Planning Board. Second. Motion made and seconded to uh, recommend. <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero on that. If I could, thanks to the planning board for taking this up so the town's not blindsided by yeah. some sense of urgency of some gigantic application or whatever. Right. You know, this is this is just planning. Yep. We did it with our solar and now this and it's this is yeah. It's this good is, to be prepared. Yeah. What do you our, the proposed Article 4 is to see if the town will accept Mass General Law Chapter 64N Section 3 to impose an excise on retail sales of marijuana for adult use at the rate of 3%. Uh, this is the, the state is if you do um, allow a facility into your town, to, well, if a town facility comes into town, they're going to. Uh, uh, sell you can um, mm -hmm. three percent of their sales can go directly to the town right think about it like local meals tax like the local right. meals tax right absolutely move to include second we have a motion made and seconded to uh, include article four which would be the uh, three percent tax on sales of marijuana all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. Uh, vote to recommend so moved motion made Second. This is a vote to recommend that 3% tax. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Be zero. Um, next up, Article 6, to see if the town vote to transfer a sum of money from available funds in the Treasury to fund the fiscal year 19 Franklin County Technical School Capital Assessment. Scott? I think this was an oversight on the submission of the budget last year, and they failed to actually include it in their assessment. Now, part of me says that's that's assessor's remorse and too bad. 
but another part of me says, well, what does that mean for next year? Right. It doesn't make the problem go away. Right. It does not sense. make the problem go away. Yep. And so, yeah, it was included. It was in the actual operating budget. Right. Way in the back, it wasn't so, um, it was a little bit buried there. So um, we did. How much is it? It's $9,807.58. And where you, where you, where your proposal to take it from? Um, that would be free cash or stabilization. Mr. Chair, if I could weigh in, that would be a more appropriate use of, we have certified free cash. Yeah. And it is part of an ongoing assessment. So. Okay. That would be an appropriate use of it. All right. All right. So a motion to include? Uh, motion. Second. Any discussion? All aye. those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Um, motion to recommend? Uh, good. I so moved. Second. Motion made and second to approve the inclusion of the Franklin County Technical School capital assessment of approximately $9,300. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, three zero on the recommend. Our article six is see the town will vote to transfer a sum of money from available funds in the treasury to fund firefighter physical examinations mandated. Mm -hmm. I hate that word. Mm -hmm. Under the new OSHA guidelines, or or take any other actions relative thereto. I under see the reason to have a physical, but now. OSHA mandates that they have physical? By February 1st, even. Um, so it's 10 firefighters at uh, approximately $600 each. How much? $100 each? $600, $600 each. $6,000. Yeah. How often do they have the physicals? I was just headed there. Yeah. <laughs> that I'm not sure of. Um, I think it would just be all, I, I think it would be annual. new ones after mm -hmm. this, but. Uh, Steve will be here next week, I believe, so we can get some more information. I, in, in my notes, if I could, Mr. Chair, I wrote down annual expense needed, question mark. That's an unfunded right. Right. Is it an annual? So I, I'd like to put the, well, uh, motion to include. Move to include. Motion, uh, all right, so we have motion move to, to include and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And, and I will say that I'm not, I mean, OSHA says that they're going to, they're gonna. They have to have it. You have to have it. I mean, it's that. That being said, mm -hmm. um, recommendation to um, recommend. I'd like to hear some. I'd like to hear from the chief to see if this is going to become something that's annual or what the actual statute is. Yeah. Can we vote like the recommendation next week after the sure, you can. comes in? Is that, yeah. is that what you like to do? I would think that would be a good idea. Would you like to table that for right now. I would yeah. like that table. Then we. <laughs> We'll ask the chief. That's a good question for the chief. Next up is the see if the town will vote to transfer money, excess wages, for yep. in the treasury to pay fire wages. A uh, question, Mr. Chair. So we know we're allowed to um, deficit spend for snow and ice and a handful of other categories, declarations of emergency, etc. Yeah. We currently have an on-call fire department, and there is a cyclical nature associated with use, seasonal use, demand, et cetera. Some years are more than others. The trajectory here has been more lately. But if this is a question of budgeting, right, are we infilling now during a special for the current FY19 only to do it again at the end? a year annual? later. Or, yeah. Right? He's not adjusting his budget no. right, to say, well, anticipating the spring leading into the annual. Right. I'm increasing by X percent. Sure. So my, my question is, and this is kind of a, a roundabout way of getting to it, we're effectively deficit spending right now because of demand, right? Mm -hmm. Do we continue deficit spending now to the annual and say this is the annual impact I'm a little reluctant to do a midpoint and then revisit again in May. Well, why don't, why don't I just, why, why don't we just have a motion to, move to include, include, yeah, move to and, include. And hopefully we can have the fire chief to, yeah, to sure. explain what, what's going on yeah, next move, week. Move to include. I wanted to start that discussion. No, that's fine. Percolating in my head. Makes sense, yeah. Second. So we have a motion made and seconded to include all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
So we'll hold this one as well. Yeah. Okay. And, and again, I just think you know, you, you know, uh, Scott's points are well taken. I mean, is it is it just exception, exceptional number of calls right now? And, and just explain, because because that's going to have to answer that question on right. town meeting floor right. also, and we, sh and we should know what it is about. Exactly right. Next is uh, next article is to vote to transfer some of money for the operation of the senior center. So basically, <clears throat> let me see if I can fill this. So the senior center has been running on many grants that we've been getting got it yep and those grants may no longer be available mm -hmm. um, so the the senior center the operations had a individual come in to do a study on the books of the senior center mm -hmm. and that person had recommended that um, the senior center should be funding its staff and major commitments with appropriated money versus mm -hmm. grants that may or may not be coming in. Right, makes perfect sense. It does. If that's really your cost, that should be your baseline assessment. And, and it is, and, and that's, I struggled with that because I, well, I struggled. I struggled with that for for for, se for a simple reason is that we we should be making those changes at the annual, not the the, right. the special. That being that being said, um, it, it's really about running the center correctly. Mm -hmm. And and this came up, and Deerfield, Whiteley have already addressed it. They've already agreed to. They already agreed to those. They've increased their appropriation through a special town meeting? Yeah. Okay. They both did. Okay. Is this to get us like up to the annual and yeah. then Yeah. So the, so this so will the, be the new baseline. Got it. So the annual operating budget less any grant rounds, grant applications that are that are approved will be based assessment. completely on the assessment. Correct. And then extra. Right. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. And do we know what the value is? And I wanted to circle it's like back. like 5000 right? 5 k Yeah, 5072 And again, Mr. Chair, if I could, uh, um, as the discussion about funding sources goes with uh, the Finance Committee and the financial team, the reality is if this is truly going to be the, the new, the new reality, if this is going to truly be the new reality, this one's got to have a recurring fund. Correct. So that's right. one that should come from free cash again. I agree. Yeah. And, and again, it's not... No, there's no pay raises or right. added staff or anything. It's yeah. just operating, operating expenses. Yeah. It's interesting, you know. We have this. We have this. You could almost pick a department or pick uh, an area of the, the town, and we've been cognizant about the use of grant money for anything that's recurring. Correct. Oh yeah. I think mm -hmm. the 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 education side of the budget kind of runs. That they run knowing there's a fair amount of different program money and grant money coming in, but they're 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 cognizant of the fact that there's tension if that money gets lost and what that means to an assessment change and how that happens annually. I, I like the idea that the senior center uh, with this review has come forward and, and is bringing this forward for the town to say, no, really, this is the it. Same situation. Yeah, it, it, and it and and I understand it. Yeah. Again, I just have. And and um, it, it's it it makes it from a management mm -hmm. sense it makes a whole bunch of sense. Sure. Um, it's also honest budgeting. Think about it. You can come back and say, "Ah, we didn't get that grant round. We need an extra pick a number insert here." Yeah. And you're I back know. at a town meeting going, "Well, okay. Well, what happened?" Yeah, I know. Right. It, um, it's right. right. All right. So, motion to include. So moved. Second. And motion made and seconded to include the uh, increase in the senior center operating expense. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, recommend, motion to recommend. Uh, motion. A second. Motion made and seconded to recommend the increase. All those in favor? Aye. Three zero. Could I Next. circle back to number seven? Do we have an uh, order of magnitude for uh, the fire wage? $5,000. So it's 5000 midpoint. Got it. Okay, thank you. 
Article 10, um, town will vote to transfer, or Article 9, to see the town will vote to transfer some money from available funds for the collector treasurer salary account. That was put in as a placeholder, um, but after talking um, with the collector treasurer and Scott, um, I don't think we need it. Um, she will be retiring in March, and her budget is through June, so I think we'll be safe there. And if not, we'll, we'd be able to address any shortfall at the annual town okay. meeting. So in this case here, we know we have an open be position. To we be know we're going to have some overlap. Yep. We also know we have to do hiring. Right. The question is, well, what kind of dollars do we want to encumber from that? Yep. We also know there's an opening. We won't have that salary after February. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to pass on this. Pass right on this. Pass this right. over. We're not going to. So next article: See if the town will vote to transfer some money from uh, available funds to install and program existing BFD geothermal pumps. The library. So this work has already been done, Correct. and the um, library trustees are seeking to be reimbursed that cost. Mm -hmm. um, the number is six thousand three hundred and eighty-nine dollars. Um, there are funds available in the capital um, stabilization, free cash, and stabilization if the board is so inclined. So it should come out of capital, right? It should come out of capital in this case here. What happened to the... So the automation system that was in place uh, was 15 plus years old, yeah. the one that was donated. The Through Green Communities Library over the last 20 months has gotten uh, automation for the remaining air handling units, thermostats. The last pieces of integration was the actual geothermal pumps. Uh, we helped and s made sure they did not have to change uh, their variable frequency drives, which was the biggest nut. They basically had to add another node, add a series of points, and integrate it into their existing platform. And now they have, they, it's, it's, it is probably not unlike the elementary school as far as town mm -hmm. goes, the, the, most, the most automated building we've got. And it was an upcharge of just north of six grand for the company that started the integration to finish the integration. So what they actually, what they actually install? So yes, yeah, Facilities Explorer, they added two more modules. They built out the rest of the points, including pressure transmitters on the supply and discharge side of the pumps. So you can look at differential pressure. Uh, they added the communications module because you had to add these points. Uh, so there's a pressure transducer, four sets of current switches, and then four sets of outputs so you could drive the VFDs. Yep. At the same time, remember in the last two years, the um, facility has had some downtime where the geothermal pumps were not resetting because of the difference in the two platforms yeah. that's erased so alarms now go out as part of this pump not running low flow low pressure you know it's it's a it's a, it's a more it's a complete system finally and it's easier to manage the whole Completely. system it's yeah. all by your phone yeah. okay so uh, motion to include uh, motion second Motion made and seconded to include the uh, the work at the library. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So if motion could. to recommend. Uh, recommend. Motion. Second. You're going to add? No, oh, I was going to just add more detail. Mm. Oh. Go ahead. So uh, with respect to this piece of integration, one of the things that came out was that the air handling units that are above, we, have, we apply uh, $3,000 odd a year in capital stabilization money for compressors. Okay. We found uh, as part of this integration was that those air handling units uh, did not have uh, automatic uh, refrigeration lockout resets. Mm. And so that was the trouble with the compressors. Uh -huh. So if they would lose flow, yeah. because flow is your both heat and cool, right. compressors would come on, compressors would run without having flow through those coils, run up into high pressure, lock out, and they would have to be reset <coughs> by mechanical. So we've had a couple of compressors stressed and replaced over the last four years, yeah. and this helped identify going through this process helped identify that as being like, ah, damn it. Shortening the life of our compressor. Got it. So. That's good. That's anyway, good. sorry. We have, there was a motion made. We have a motion to uh, recommend. Second. 
<coughs> in favor of uh, the money go to the library for the geothermal pump, signify by saying aye. 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 That's what I was talking before about new library. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. Not, yeah. No. It was fascinating, actually, the, the discussion. We can talk a little offline about, about those air handling heat pump units uh, and, and, you know, what was chosen at the time. Yep. And, and like so many things in initial construction, you can you can you can budget for the Cadillac, and then you have to get to your value add. And what happens? Some of those accessories all end up coming off. Yeah. So anyway, well, and 15 years ago, we didn't have iPhones, or, uh, and all the technology has Correct. dramatically changed. Correct. So no, that was three zero vote on that. Three zero. Correct. Yep. Three zero. Uh, and of. Article 12 there, Tom. Yep. Town Council is opined that that. Article is not necessary only when we go to spend the money because it's set up as a special revenue fund Yep, mm. and we're not ready to spend it yet. That's okay. a big whopping five hundred and twenty eight dollars and fifty cents So this is if I, if I could mr. Chair the backstory. This is essentially the creation of a fund mm -hmm. If we're only creating a fund Why would we not have this on right now? I guess um, town council said because it's a special revenue fund. Oh. Right? So you have to have a revenue source to put right. it inside right. there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And yeah. So when we go to spend it, then we'll need then we the okay. article. Right. Okay. Next article is um, health insurance account. That one again um, was put on as a placeholder, but I believe we're not. Uh, we don't need it at this time. Okay. So Mr. Chair, this this was to deal with the run out costs as we transferred plans last year yep and it looks like those run out costs are not going to be extraordinary and that Maya may well be able to pick those up and we can pay them incrementally through the normal assessment Good. Um, subject to change right <laughs> so she I'll make wins. these <laughs> I'll make these changes the warrant has to be posted um, by the 10th Thursday. Right. So the two articles for the fire department that are on hold, I'll leave those on and then we'll either table them or pass over them Correct. at town meeting if we don't. Okay. Yeah, everything that's here that is most moved to include is the total warrant. And we have recommendations on all, I think, but the fire department. And the planning board the, will be a handout yeah. or whatever. Okay. Do we want and, and we knew, and, and, knew, and about the marijuana. Uh, for the planning board, we yeah. kind of knew that was in the works mm -hmm. during the town uh, town meetings. Thing. Correct. But but we needed we needed things to occur. Mm -hmm. We um we needed a lot to get settled. Right. Well, that's yeah. a great point. The law had to get settled. Right. We we've had this situation with adopting a OPEB before and having it come around and get settled. Right. So, do we want to highlight on there too that because there's the whole table, do we want to specifically highlight? I think that would make the most sense. You know what I mean? The, the things that, here's what's really changing out of that. There's four pages of article there, but there might be seven points. Yeah, yeah that's and I, I'm making them up, but still. Suggested right. that with the strike throughs and stuff, right. if we do the handout. Yeah. That was, it's a little easier for people to see the real difference. Do you want town council present at the town meeting? Give it now. So. Okay. Just available by phone. Okay. Right. I mean, I know with the, the marijuana one, comp, if, right. <laughs> might, if we may need counsel for clarification. Okay. The last uh, item on the agenda was the FERCOG District Local Technical Assistance Project requests. That our annual go through and pick our things. And yeah, if we could do that. For um, they're looking for a response by yeah. January yeah. 25th, um, which brings me to the other thing I wanted to mention. Um, there's a holiday coming up on the 12th, so I was wondering if the board. Um, would uh, Martin Luther King Day? Yeah. Yep. Is that the, yeah. What is that? No, no it's not the 21st. 12th. It's the yeah, 21st. 21st, 21st. yes. It's the 21st. So if we could meet on the 22nd, 22nd. because the following Monday will be special town meeting. That's fine. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. All right. And this they want by the 25th. But, yeah. So we can so have this on our next agenda. Okay. Yeah. And we have the fire chief coming on the next agenda. Is that a budget presentation? And uh, so that's the plan is to have him come in so he'll be available for the review of the warrant articles with the finance committee and do his budget presentation. Got it. Okay. I'm just Thank waiting you. for confirmation. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. One last thing. Uh, move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Oh, second. Oh, yeah. It's grudging. We're having too much fun. <laughs>
Quickly to adjourn, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero. Thank you, FCAT. Sherry declares.